Zvi Josef Herschel was born on December 29, 1942, in Zwolle. About 800 people lived in the Jewish community of Zwolle. At dawn on May 10, 1940, Germany invaded the Netherlands. The Dutch army surrendered just four days later. Before the German invasion in early 1940, some 140,000 Jews lived in the Netherlands, representing close to 1.6% of the population. During the Holocaust, nearly 105,000 of them were murdered. Following the occupation, the Netherlands imposed an anti-Jewish policy in which Jewish civil servants were suspended from work. A meticulous list of the Jewish population was drawn up. It was forbidden to publish Jewish newspapers, and steps were taken to further oppress the Jews economically, culturally, and socially. The second half of 1941 saw an escalation of anti-Jewish policies. In May 1941, Around 80,000 Jews lived in Amsterdam. By that spring, the Nazis designated those streets of Amsterdam where many Jews were living. Later on, some parts of the city of Amsterdam were called the Jewish Quarter. From 1942 onwards, all Jews in the Netherlands were ordered to move to the Jewish Quarter of Amsterdam. I was born in the darkest time of the, the war in Holland. My parents were forced to live in the ghetto of Amsterdam just before the transportation to the uh, concentration camp in Holland, Westerbork, and there was no way out. They tried, but it was impossible. And my parents decided to entrust me to non-Jewish people, and my father contacted his uh, the wife of his boss, Mrs. Schwenke, and she arrived in the, in the ghetto of Amsterdam together with a 17-year-old daughter. In April 1943, she and her 17-year-old daughter, Christina or Tina Schwenke, came to the ghetto of Amsterdam and they came to get me out of this terrible situation. Tina Schwenke, the 70-year-old daughter, took me from my parents in her arms, acting as a young mother, and both went back to Oosterbeek. Oosterbeek is in the east of Holland, near Arnhem. In 1942, the Germans prepared to expel all the Jews from the Netherlands to extermination camps. Jews were rounded up from Amsterdam's various districts and then transported to the Fucht and Westerbork camps in the Netherlands. Between 1942 and 1944, the Westerbork transit camp was used to transport Jews who had been deported from the Netherlands, mainly to extermination camps in Eastern Europe. Approximately 105,000 Jews were deported from Westerbork, most of them to Auschwitz-Birkenau and Sobibor, and a minority to Theresienstadt and Bergen-Belsen. Nico and Ami Herschel. Zvi's parents were transported to the Dutch transit camp of Westerbork in June 1943. One month later, they were transported from Westerbork to the Sobibor death camp. His mother was 24, his father 27 years old, when they were murdered at Sobibor on July 23, 1943. Almost the entire family perished in the Holocaust. First of all, I will emphasize the enormous love my parents had for me to entrust me to non-Jewish people. I was the firstborn and I was almost, I was about four months old. I, you cannot imagine what it means for parents to give away your child, and especially not in a situation as it was at that time in the Second World War. So, in their home, 
it was very dangerous because Mr. Schwenke was taken hostage with other 250 well-known uh, uh, Dutch politicians and other people. And Mrs. Schwenke realized that it was dangerous. So she went to the friend of her husband, Mr. Willem de Jong, who was the head of the resistance in Oosterbeek. He came immediately and he said, it's too dangerous. And he took the little boy, me, to his home. When I arrived in his home, the home of Mr. and Mr. de Jong, Mrs. de Jong, Marge de Jong said, this boy is not going to leave my house. And that's the way I stayed there for the whole uh, period of the Second World War. They had already five children of their own. And they had another Jewish teenager in hiding in the same house. The risk the people took for taking in Jews to put them in hiding was as high as to be a Jew in those days. And the fate of them was exactly the same. Not only for one person, but the whole family. Thinking of this period, and what I remember is that I was taken care of with love. I was taken in as their own child. Also my siblings were my brothers and sisters. They were religious people. They were Protestant. We went to church. Even today I know the prayers. And every day the Bible, the Old Testament came after lunch on the table and uh, there was always a, a, a chapter, a story about what happens that day or this week about the, uh, the Bible. And I can remember that in September 1944, the gliders landed around our house. But soon after, they started to fight, and also in our street. So we went down into the cellar, into the basement, of the house. And there we were waiting what was going on in front of the house. All of a sudden there was a big bang. The house was hit by a bomb, collapsed, got on fire, and we got out of the house. It was a terrible moment in my life. I still remember that. The screaming of my sisters. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I dream about it. But uh, we got out unharmed and for about two weeks, we were living from basement to basement, and then afterwards we uh, were evacuated to Spakenburg. Spakenburg is in the vicinity of Amsterdam. In May 1945, Holland was liberated, and I remember the Canadians in their jeeps coming up the street, and I was sitting on the shoulders of my father, and everyone was happy and singing and dancing in the streets with a lot of flags, Dutch flags. In May 1945, with the signing of the German capitulation, the Netherlands was liberated from German occupation. After the liberation of the Netherlands, the only survivor of the Herschel family, Zvi's grandmother Rebecca, came to take out the boy from his rescuer's family. She wanted to raise her grandchild in a Jewish home. On the spot, I lost my family. My father, my mother, my siblings. It was terrible. Not only that, when I came to Rotterdam, where she used to live, I had to change my name. My name was Henky de Jong. I was a part of the, of the de Jong family. And all of a sudden, no, your name is Herman. I couldn't grab it. On top of it, I was forbidden to have contact with my family, with my parents, with my mother. And I had to pray in a different way, in a different language, which I didn't understand at all. And I had to eat kosher. 
my whole youth, till I was 18, was very difficult. I felt alone. Well, I had to teach myself. And I can say that I'm lucky that I found a way. At the age of eight, Svi found a box with the family papers his father had sent with him as a baby into hiding. His grandmother had kept them all those years. Svi started to reconstruct his tragic family story. He learned about his father's deep dedication to the land of Israel and developed the same attitude, love for the land of Israel and the wish to live there as a free people. My parents were both Zionists, already in their, in their teens. My father wrote 10 diaries and there's no page where, where I, he doesn't write anything about uh, Zionism as such. And his dream was that he is going to make Aliyah together with my mother. And unfortunately, it never came out. And it, it was remarkable that a straight, a straight line between his thoughts about living as a Jew in the diaspora and my thoughts as being a Zionist and wanted to live in, in Israel. I could have never expressed myself much better than after reading one of the uh, sentences of my father's diary. A people without a country doesn't have a future. And I'm happy that I followed actually the steps of my parents. As a teenager, Svi joined the Jewish youth movement, B'nai Akiva. Svi married Annette in 1965. Svi and Annette have two daughters, Mirla, born in 1965, and Natalie, born in 1967. In 1986, Svi and his family decided to fulfill their dream and immigrate to Israel. They came from Amsterdam to the coast of Haifa on their own yacht in order to become citizens of Israel. The journey took them several weeks. Svi and Annette built their home in Tel Mond. Here, they live close to their daughter Natalie and their grandchildren. Throughout the years, Svi maintained a warm connection with the de Jong family. Whenever he visited the Netherlands, he also went to see the family that saved his life. The de Jong family and the Schwenke family were honored as righteous among the nations. Their names are inscribed in Yad Vashem's garden of the righteous among the nations. Some years ago, I went to Yom HaShoah here in Tel Mont to the primary school of my grandson. And there were over 600 youngsters from the school in white shirts. <laughs> Today, now, it was so emotional. I never had this feeling of to be together. I never had this beautiful youth, what they have. To relate my story to my life is that it's something unbelievable that my parents, with all their love for their child, for me, entrusted me to strangers. We cannot imagine what went through their heads the moment they made a decision, the moment they handed over their baby, their firstborn baby, to strangers. There are so many things that influence your life. And there are always two possibilities. You can go to the left and you can go to the right. But what is the right direction? The right direction is something what your heart tells you. You mustn't forget the past, you have to learn from it and to stop discrimination. If we want to live in a better world, we start now not to discriminate anymore. 
If we want to live in a better world for the next generation to come, we have to do that.